praise and the glory and the honor this morning in Jesus mighty name amen and amen y'all may be seated You're good like that. Yeah, you're good like that. Even when it's all going wrong, my heart is singing a different song, and I can't explain it. No, I can't contain it. It's just inside. You're the reason I clap my hands Cause you're good like that Yeah, you're good like that The kind of joy money never could buy The kind of peace that surpasses my mind No, I can't explain it No, I can't contain it It's just a
on the Ritz. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. And created the light. In judgment and wrath, he poured out on Sodom. The mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God. Putting on the Ritz. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Of the night, he spoke into the darkness and created the light. In judgment and wrath, he poured out on Sodom. The mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God.
Darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and powerful.
I think we ought to all give Sister Rosa a big <laughs> love and appreciation.
Praise the Lord, church. If you're blessed, you've seen all that God's doing, hallelujah, in this, in this house. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet and just give God glory tonight, this morning. Woo! Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hebrews 13. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.
started to learn this song he thought he was learning it from Pastor Carol Matilda but what he didn't know was he was learning it for all of us but he was learning it for mama Michelle I'm sorry but I just have to tell this story because it's so dear to my heart and this song is so dear to my heart I'm so thankful that God gave us Tom. Amen. Just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This guy, I tell you, we're blessed to have him. We're blessed to have everyone on this platform. Amen. But I'm telling you what, God has blessed us with worship. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship. It's all about you, Jesus. King of all kings name above all names, the one who loved us when we were unlovable, that's for you, it's all about you.
Lift your hands all over this house. Tell the Lord how much you love him this morning. Hallelujah. Tell him, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving a wretch like me. Everybody knew me for the wrong reasons in my hometown. I always had a bottle in my hand. They knew me for the wrong reasons, but you know what? Now they know me for the right reasons. Everybody at my work calls me preacher. I didn't ask for that title. Even before I started to preach, they called me, they called me uh, uh, preacher. <laughs> you know, just, uh, I, I didn't ask for it. But I, I was talking about Jesus, so I guess I am a preacher, amen? Hallelujah. There's nothing else that we can talk about. One guy says, don't talk to me about Jesus. I said, okay, I'll honor that. I said, if I'm talking to somebody out about Jesus, you better walk away because I ain't stopping. I love you. I love you. And you know, I saw him about two weeks ago, maybe about a month, and he ran up to me and he gave me a hug. He said, Jeff, how are you? I said, I'm so glad to see you. God has touched our people. He's touched our church. Thank you, Lord. Let us all be ministers. Let us all be preachers. Let us all be those that spread the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time, Tom, I think, for us. Hallelujah. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in. glad to be in the house of God this morning. Brother Bobby and Brother Tommy, would you get ready to take up the offering and tithes, please? Uh-oh. You know, it, it's wonderful. I, I've been looking around and we got all these babies. We're not a dying church. And Bobby wants to take everyone. I'm home with you. So if you need a babysitter, <laughs> let Bobby have them and Karen will shoot you. But... <laughs> 
90 days and no returns. Oh, wow. Karen, you better pray. All right. We, we just want to thank the Lord this morning for the privilege of being able to celebrate 50 years. It's quite wild seeing it across the screen. Uh, many things that we have done. But I want to tell you, I see the church going farther than it's ever gone. I see it going better than it's ever gone. And I appreciate uh, Mark and Rosa taking the helm of this place. And uh, I just, uh, I'm just thankful this morning. Father God, we just love you this morning and we praise you. We thank you that you have saved us, that you have stayed with us throughout this time. And Father God, we thank you for what this church is going to do. And we thank you for the tithes and offering that are coming in this morning. And we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the consuming fire of the Lord? Can you just worship Him? Can you just worship Him? The presence of the Lord is in this place. Can you just worship Him? Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you. We honor you tonight. We honor you this morning, Father. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning it is my privilege and my honor to introduce our speaker this morning, Bishop David Taylor. Or, sorry, not David Taylor. Thank you for being here. Amen. David Scoggins. See, this is what happens when you get the double D in the house. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, we're allowed to make mistakes, right? Uh, forgive me, brother. Forgive me. Come on up, Bishop. Amen. Please welcome Bishop Scoggins. I was going to sing this morning, but I think in light of where we are in the service, I think I just want to go right to the Word. Can we do that? Amen. Amen. I want you to prepare your hearts this morning. How many going to pray for me today? Amen. Amen. I just really feel like that the Lord wants to do some mighty things in this house this morning, and He already has begun. I want you to find yourselves in Matthew, the 16th chapter, this morning. And while you're turning there, if you'll allow me to visit for just one moment, I want to just first of all say what an honor it is to have been here all weekend long for a 50-year celebration of the Leander Church of God. Can we give God praise for 50 years? I'm also thankful today for Pastor and First Lady Shellnut that have stepped into a moment in time when... Church is not popular. It's not easy. Come on, somebody. And in addition to that, we find ourselves in a place where uh, in the transition of things from his father going to glory, stepping into a realm and a role in an immediate moment. And I remember the phone call when I got the telephone call when Pastor Mark called me and he said, uh, Pastor Scoggins, I just really feel like that at this time, I want to step into this role and, and fill this gap. And I said, I think it's going to be more than filling a gap. And as we continue to move forward, he realized that the call of God to fulfill the legacy that has been established was upon his life. And not just he alone, but also First Lady Rosa in serving. Because how many knows when God calls one, he calls them both. So can you give your pastors a hand today and love on them? Amen. I would be in error this morning if I did not take a moment to honor my friends. My friend that is in glory this morning. That if the Lord would allow him one glimpse, I don't know that that would be possible because of everything that we have to endure here because there's no suffering, pain, or sorrow in heaven. But if there was an opportunity for Pastor Shelnut to look from heaven today, I believe he would look with a smile 
And I believe that he would say, even as you worship. Worship is though you only have one moment left. Worship him with everything that is within you. Because if he would be smiling from heaven today, he would be doing that, looking upon you and thinking the very things that we all hope for when we see Jesus for ourselves. And that is not to have a title of bishop or pastor or to receive a title of preacher, but to hear him say the words, come in, my good and faithful servant. And along with he this morning, I want to honor, of course, Mama Shell Nutt, because she has been the mama of this church for 32, now 34 years. And I just want to give honor where honor is due today. Will you honor them today? <laughs> to all of the staff, thank you so much. You've been so accommodating and have done a great job throughout this whole revival weekend. I've never been more honored to be called somebody. And I, I got introduced as Pastor Taylor today. So can you honor him today? Amen. And it is my joy because, honestly, she is my joy. A lot of times I have to go and I minister and she's unable to go with me because of personal home circumstances that I'm not going to get into this morning. But the fact of the matter is, is uh, it is a joy and a delight to have my wife with us today. Amen. <laughs> Sister Denise. And most of all, I'm thankful because the Holy Ghost is in the house. So I'm going to do my best to share quickly and swiftly, but without reservation, I'm going to give the word. Can you say amen? I'm a little old school, but I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word this morning, that it'll be a lamp for your feet and a light unto your path. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, we'll read just a couple of verses of scripture there, and then you'll roll over to chapter 7 as well. The word of the Lord declares in verse number 18, and I'm going to need something that I can hear, because I'm not hearing real well. Maybe you're hearing me okay. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee, key point here, the keys of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now I want you to go quickly, if you would please, to the seventh chapter of Matthew. In your Bible should read something like this in about verse 21. Thank you. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in thy name have we not cast out devils, and in your name done many wondrous works? And then will I profess unto them, this is Jesus speaking, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Therefore, somebody say therefore. therefore. That means there's another side of the coin. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which has built his house upon the rock. And when the rain would descend, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon the house, and it fell not, it was founded upon the rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, here's the warning, are going to be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon that house, it fell. And it fell greatly, or the King James Version says it like this, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things that the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he had taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. I believe without reservation we have seen a theme this week, this weekend, of past, present, and future. Amen. But above everything else, when you look into the future, foundation has been a key point 
on Friday night when we talked about Jesus. Foundation has been a key point when we talked about the present and the legacy that is being built upon. Because without a good solid foundation, without a good solid rock, there's nothing to build on. It's important that your foundation doesn't have holes in it. It's important that your foundation doesn't lack. And it's important that the proper mix and temperament of that foundation is rock solid. So this morning, without reservation, with the help of the Holy Ghost in your prayer today, I'd like to preach upon this thought today, upon this rock. Will you stretch your hands this way and ask the Lord to touch me as I pray over you? Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above every name, I pray you'll anoint this vessel of clay to deliver your word your way. I pray, Father God, that in our next few moments together, God the Holy Ghost would touch and minister to every life, that you'd open up every mind, heart, and, and Father God, that you would allow us to receive and not be receivers only, but become doers of your word. We pray now, Father, that you will anoint us by your word and that you will empower us by your word. And then in the midst of it all, God, that when we walked out of this place today, that we will declare these words, surely we have been in the house and the presence of the Lord. And Lord, we will give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. God bless you as you're seated this morning. Today, we're celebrating the past because how many knows you got to know where you come from to know where you're going? We celebrate the present because it's in the present where we're living and where we're moving. The Bible says it's in him that we live and that we breathe and that we have our being. Come on, somebody. And in addition to that, we're going to celebrate the future. Why? Because it doesn't matter if we've got 50 days or if we've got 50 weeks or if we've got 50 months. Or help us, Lord, if he tarries, that we had another 50 years, which would make the church 100 years old. May I tell you, it makes no difference how many 50s we still have left in our lives. The Bible says that we are supposed to continue to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What does that mean, preacher? That means that I need to keep on contending in what I know to be truth and let that truth continue to set me free. Can somebody give the Lord praise? I believe it's imperative this morning that we understand what it is to become rock solid in our foundation. Rock solid foundations are built typically upon the right recipe and mix of the right kind of concrete. Now, so many times we see that blocks are built. Is it okay if I set something up here? We all right there? I'm going to do my best not to break it or destroy it or mess it up. But just in case somebody wants to see, I thought it would be pertinent. I put a bag around it so that way whatever happens here ends up in the bag in the Lord's, hopefully in Jesus' name. But the fact of the matter is, is when you get to look at blocks, they're just that. They have no life. They have no soul. But they do have purpose. And the fact of the matter is, is both of these blocks, both small and large, they got gaps in them. There's a reason for that. Because when you use these blocks proper and you have the right mix of ingredients of concrete, you can build a structure that when the winds blow and the rains show up and everything around it starts coming apart, the, the bricks that have been sealed with the right concrete, that have been tempered just right, that have been put together in the right order and have been founded as a solid, firm foundation in every mix of every situation. Everything else might blow away, but you'll look and you'll still see the slab sitting there. How many have ever seen things been wiped away and houses been removed, but the concrete slab still stands? When I get to thinking about that, I get to thinking about how the adversary is very cunning in the way he does things. He looks for the holes in our lives to begin subtly just kind of chipping away at the situation. And see, a lot of times our faith is about the size of that brick. I got two different ones, but this little red one is about the size of most people's faith. And it's got holes in it. Because they can only trust God so far. Well, that gives place for the adversary because he gets a little bit more 
Can you pick that up? Gets a little bit more intense. Just so it don't fall off. And he continues subtly chipping away at our faith. Well, why doesn't he go towards the interior pieces? Because he doesn't want you to recognize that he's chipping away at your faith. Because before long, before things happen, you're going to realize that as he continues to hit on those solid areas, that the hammer is going to get a little bit more intense and a little bit more intense and a little bit more intense and a little more intense. And before long, that little bit of faith that you had is gone. What was it missing? Same thing that the bigger block can miss. Because, see, the small things happen until it begets big. And then it gets people's attention. And I'm sure we'll find an usher in a few minutes to take care of that before we get to an altar. But don't touch it. Leave it there. Because when you look at that, that's what it looks like when you don't have the right mix spiritually inside of your life with your foundation. If you want to be rock solid in Christ, you got to realize, first of all, that on the other side, concrete has to have cement and air and water and salt and gravel and sand and all of these other elements. And every one of them have a percentage it's the proper mix. But when you look at your life spiritually and you look at what kind of firm foundation you have, I have a question. Do you have holes in your foundation? Is there areas where the adversary can slowly and subtly begin to tap on your life until you slowly but surely start to deteriorate and come apart? 50 years celebration is wonderful, but it's of no effect if it doesn't have Jesus in the mix. Hello, somebody. Because, see, I came by to tell you that there is a mix to your foundation this morning. There are things and elements that you're going to need. And then I, I didn't even know that Pastor Taylor was going to share this on Friday night. And he made the statement that you've got to have John 3.16 in your life. Because without Jesus, there is nothing. There is nothing that you can do. There's no remission of sin without the blood of Jesus. Come Come on, somebody. There's no salvation without the blood of Jesus. There's no eternity without the blood of Jesus. And may I tell you that the Bible says uh, that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So in order to have a firm foundation in Christendom, you got to have some John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would not believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. But I like this next verse in the 17. It says God sent not his son into the world to condemn this world. That's what the devil does. John 10 and 10 says that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to condemn your life to hell. Come on somebody. He wants to rob you of the blessing of your children and your grandchildren and the generations that represent through your house. When I get to thinking about that, he didn't come to condemn us, but he come that we might have life through him. Come on, somebody. And then I get to looking at the next piece. The Bible says that Romans 10 and 9, that if you'll confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. You can't have a firm foundation if you don't trust and believe in the Almighty God. Come on, somebody. There's no firming in your foundation. There's no proper and leveled out temperament without Jesus in the center of your mix. And you have to confess that with your mouth and you have to believe it within your heart. There's a lot of people that got lip service today. Oh, I believe in Jesus. Do you? Uh-huh. Well, the devil does too and he goes to church. Hello, somebody. 
The question is, is do you come as a sinner that's been saved by grace? Or do you just come as a sinner? Uh-oh. Hello, somebody. Because the last time I checked, that in order for you to be able to make heaven your home, you got to go by way of the blood door. you got to come by way of Jesus. And he put it in plain writing for all of us. He said you must confess it with your mouth uh, and you must believe it in your heart. Uh, there must be a change. Tomorrow. Oh, I don't like change. I didn't ask you what you like this morning. Hello? It's not about you. There is nothing to hide behind back here. Hello? It's not about us. And what we do is we need to recognize this morning that what we are, who we are, and what we will amount to be is all because of Jesus. The songwriter said, all because of Jesus, I'm alive. Come on, somebody. Can we give Jesus a hand this morning? I'm going to tell you something else you need in your mix. You need some faith. You need a little Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the things not yet seen. But I like the word substance. I don't want somebody to be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal when I sit down to listen to somebody preach. Hello, somebody. I want somebody with some substance. When I sit down to eat, bless God, I want to eat a meal. If I want to fast, I won't be at the table. Y'all going to get that in a minute. When I sit down at the master's table, I expect some substance because the faith inside of me says uh, he has prepared a table for me even in the moments in life when I'm in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil, and my cup will continually overflow. I wish somebody would help me this morning. See, when I get to thinking about the Lord and all that he's done for me, something begins to stir up inside of me. Isn't that the way David was? He began to stir himself up and encourage himself in the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 19 times in a row, he started out with praise ye the Lord. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't Sister Denise because he felt like praising God. It's because he said, I've got to get up and put one foot in front of the other and lift up my head in worship and praise the Almighty, whether I feel like it or whether I don't. Too many times they want to, folk want to pick and choose how I'm going to worship God, when I'm going to worship God, and the way I'm going to worship God. At what point did it become yours to choose? And in verse number six, the Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please him. Come on, somebody. So you got to have that in your mix. How many knows we're not perfect this morning? Pastor David's not, either one of us, are not perfect this morning. Except when we come by way of the blood door, that he who is perfect under the boho shotor amahasahia makes us perfect. And when we acknowledge that no matter what title that we hold in life, that the only one that matters is the one I told you. Of all of the things I could be called in life, the only one, Mama Shalom, I want to be called is a good and a faithful servant. Because the next words out of the master's mouth, I hope and long for. Enter in, hallelujah, unto thy reward. Is there anybody that wants that eternal reward this morning? Oh, somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Mm. we're all sinners saved by grace Matthew 25 and 21 in verses 23 it tells us that he will call us good and faithful these are the ingredients that when I add in the fruit of the spirit love and 
joy and peace. The one we don't like, long-suffering and temperance. Come on, somebody. The patience that for most of us has already left our body like Jesus. Come on. Yeah. The Bible says against such, there's no laws against it. And I got to have the anointing of the sweet Holy Ghost. Like it's found in Acts chapter 1. That the Bible says that we will become witnesses. Verse number 8. After the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. It says that when the suddenly, when the winds blow. And the immediately show up. Come on somebody. And the rains descend. Come on somebody. Then it matters not what it is that I'm dealing with. It matters not what it is that I'm facing. It matters not what kind of hell that I'm going through or what kind of hot furnace it is that I'm contending with. What matters most is that Jesus is in the center of my foundation. And when that wind blows, it's not to blow me over. It's to blow in my life and breathe on me. These two guys stepped all over my sermon. And if you miss the last two, you get it all in one today. Hello. I can't do anything without the anointing. And guess what? You can't either. The anointing is not just for the preacher that stands up on Sundays and Wednesdays and the teacher that teaches your children and your young, your young marrieds and your young adults and your, and, and, and your teenagers. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's not just for a worship leader that stands up. And may I just tell you, these people that come up here and they sing, they're not here to entertain you. Nope. Come on, somebody. Amen. They're not here to make you feel good. They're here to entertain the Holy Ghost and allow the Holy Ghost to anoint, to convict, to reprove. Oh, my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And when the word comes forth, it's not there to tickle your ears and make you feel comfortable. As a matter of fact, in so many ways, it ought to make you feel a whole lot uncomfortable. It ought to make you feel like you need to move like you got ants in your pants. Because there's something inside of you that says, there's something got a hold on me. Some of the best testimony I've ever heard in my life is when somebody got up and they said, I am thankful that I am saved. I'm thankful that I'm sanctified. I'm thankful that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I know that I know that I, and before you even find out what it is they know, they take off shouting unto the Lord. Well, I got news for you. I'm going to finish it today. I found out what it is that they know. They know Jesus Christ personally. They got a foundational mix that cannot be broken. And when the winds come and the rains begin to ascend, you are still able to stand. Oh, somebody praise him. Upon this rock. So the question faces us, how does this affect the body? How does this affect us today? The church is not now, nor has it ever been, a structure made with hands. I love the pictures that show the opening of where the dirt was pushed back and the formation of this building was to be placed. But as beautiful as it is and as awful a mess that I have made, I want to tell you, this is not the church. The church always has been and shall always be the people and the family of God. I can't vouch for everybody else, but I know three of the mix that were listed on the screen. I know Pastor Shillnut that is in glory today. 
I know Pastor Kendrick that's sitting in the back today. I know Pastor Taylor that sits among us. And then the fourth in which that is currently present and accounted for. I know Pastor Mark. And I know the anointing that all of them have carried. And I came by to tell you they aren't interested in a all about me scenario. It's not about look at me and look at what I did and the way I'm doing it. It's a we thing. Why? Because the church has to become a team, a unit of unity that works together in one mind and one accord. Yes, it has to have a leader because the anointing flows from the head. I was going to preach like this. But this church, as beautiful as it is, and in the modifications that it's had over the years as a structure, it's had beautiful, more special modifications made in the family of God. One of my favorite parts of the video was... And we're continuing a legacy with beautiful babies. First lady, did you put that up there? Did you type that in? She can nod at me. Is she up there? No. She did. Watch this. She has no idea what that really means. I love to cuddle the little ones because I go into full-on papa mode. The best thing in the world is Papa. Come on, somebody. It's right next to good and faithful servant. Come on now. But what about the babies that are infants in Christ? They hadn't walked through the door yet. You say, well, why hadn't they walked through the door? Because you didn't invite them yet. All got quiet now. Stand up, sir. Turn around and look at them. I want you to say this with me. Ready? Yes, You're going to hate me for this, but it's all right. Okay. All right. You, you, you still love me, though, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm in good shape because round is a shape. I knew you'd get that. You tell by looking at us. God hadn't called us to fast real often. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Say... Say this with me. Say, it's not my job. It's not my job to beget sheep. To beget sheep. Thank you. You can sit down. When the church stops being a pastor-centered church and starts becoming a sheep begetting sheep church and you start reaching out to allow God to reach within and to use you as the testimony witness of the Lord you will see an expansion growth that you have never seen before why because it's too easy to leave it to the preacher it's too easy to leave it to the first lady it's too easy to leave it to the preacher's family and that's happened for years but God sent me by to tell you that he's still in the mix of your foundation and the same anointing that anoints him is an anointing that will anoint you and the same favor that gives is given unto him is the same favor that will be given unto you and when you open your mouth the same God that fills his mouth will be the same God that fills your mouth and maybe you're like Moses and you just aren't real good with words and you get a little beside yourself that's okay he'll send you by somebody to help to translate what you have need of so that you can minister thus saith the Lord I came by to tell you it's time for sheep to beget the sheep and bring them to the shepherd to take care of. We are all sinners saved by grace. Just because he calls somebody to carry a Bible to study to show themselves approved as a workman be not ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and holds a microphone and the title is pastor does not mean that we weren't sinners that were saved by grace we came through the same blood door and we met the same Jesus and he anoints us all can you say amen preacher I'm preaching with you. 
I agree with you. Then get busy doing what you're hearing the preacher say. This is a living, breathing organism of people. And despite the adversary's best shot at destroying the church way back before Jesus came and in 2020 when he sent his victimized virus. Come on, somebody. And guess what? It wasn't COVID. It was the shutdown of the church. Hello, somebody. They smothered it just like they do everything else with COVID. And COVID is a real virus. And I lost very, very special people close to me. Victimized to that horrible, horrible virus. But there was a greater virus that the media didn't pay attention to. And so many of the church did not pay attention to. And the reason why we have cameras in our churches, and when we never had cameras hardly before, unless you were some great big huge television evangelist, and the reason why we all become TV evangelists overnight, and media specialists overnight, and we added lights to our church so that you could see and up lights so that the screens on the other side wouldn't be so dark, was because there was a, a, an attack to destroy and close the church. I came by to tell you the devil took his best shot. He came to kill, steal, and destroy the best he possibly could. But I'm thankful that the foundation upon the rock of salvation, which is Jesus Christ, still prevails. Because he said, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Oh, somebody shout. Lift your hands and give him glory. I am your God and you will prevail. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Do not listen to the adversary who lies to you and tells you mythically that you're of no good, that you're of no use, and that you cannot. For I am the God of turning around the situations to make the impossible possible. I am still the God that heals, delivers, and sets you free. And I'm still the God of your foundation. Said the Somebody lift your hands and magnify the Lord in this place. Come on. Huh? Hallelujah. Brother Jeff, just softly, softly. The church 50 years ago was established upon the principles of love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith, meekness and temperance, and the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. I got good and bad news today. Don't worship monuments because this is not your last building. Don't be afraid to do what's necessary 
because what's necessary has already been appointed and anointed by him. I'm wrapping it up, I promise. The Lord sent me with a serious question. Where do you find yourself, church, plugging in? Remember the holes in the bricks? They're just blocks. Until the builder and the maker fills them and stacks them in the right order and utilizes them as a firm foundation this is the foundation it's not the walls the covering is Jesus Woo. but the interior will be filled with an atmosphere of worship that will flip this city upside down. The question is, where will you plug in? Pastor David, I don't even know where to start. It's called the Ministry of Helps. What does that look like? Glad you asked. Can you pick up trash? You know that's a ministry. Keeping the house of the Lord inside and out looking beautiful. Can you clean? How about a little light duty carpentry work? Can you handle that? Can you dust? Come on now. Can you file and organize and plan? Some can, some can't. What's your giftedness? Can you smile? Everybody smile at me. Turn around to your neighbor and shake their hand. I just want to make sure your shaker was working. Come on now. Can you say hi? Turn around and say hi. You have just qualified yourself for the hospitality team. Because you can smile, you can say hello, and you can shake hands. Come on, somebody. I hope this is all right. If it's not, you can shoot me until God I die. Can we use Facebook and media and social media for something other than our opinion? Can we start posting encouraging words and thoughts about the wonderful service and the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost that we experienced in the house? Can we break the Facebook algorithm with a Holy Ghost movement that touches the world wide web in a way that the administrative staff of Facebook gets saved? Come on, somebody. Yeah. How about that? Sorry, I just went to Facebook jail on your account. Can you run a camera and do some sound, or are you willing to be taught? Come on. Babe, can I have my water? Because when you give a nice bottle of water to somebody with a smile... The Bible says that when you've even done it to the least of these, come on, somebody, you've done it unto the Lord. Make sure that you give it to them without being drunk first. Can you pray? Can you talk? You know what was beautiful about the last presentation is that the church has the ability to talk even when you can't speak with your mouth. 
you can speak with your hands. Pastor Taylor, you can speak with your actions. That reflects your heart. Come on, somebody. So when you're out at the restaurant and the server gives you horrible service, and what you want to do is write them a nice note to say your tip for the day is. Instead, why don't you try being a blesser for the day and leave them a $10 tip instead of the no tip. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because everybody's entitled to have a bad day sometimes. And church folks are the worst tippers there are. God help us. And the most demanding. That's why most servers don't like to work on Sunday. You want to know why it is it's hard to get into a restaurant on Sunday? It's because we have gotten a bad rap with a bad name. Let's turn it around. We were sitting yesterday at lunch, and I immediately asked the gentleman when he came back for the second time, and I do this rather often. I said, I, I'm so sorry. I failed to get your name. Yep. What's your name, sir? His name was Matthew. Oh, I got to thinking that's where I'm going to be preaching out of on Sunday. And Matthew served us well because every time Matthew came back, I reminded him he's doing a good job. I thanked him every time he said something down at my table. It wasn't an expectation. It was thankfulness. I wonder if there's anybody who knows how to be thankful. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Can you do that? See, it's a ministry of helps. Can you preach or teach? Can you work altars? Can you play an instrument? If you can't play and sing, don't do it. Just do it from your chair. Hello. Because God hears beautiful melody out of you where others may not. Hello. Not everybody's called to that area. Come on now. But if you can do it, why not do it? Can you encourage? I think I just talked about that. Do you have city and county influences? that will affect things now and in the future? Do they know where you go to church? Do they know why you attend church? Do you? Because we don't go to church just to check the box and to get our stamp. The Bible says everything that we do, we should do is unto the Lord. If all you ever do is walk in on Sunday to listen to the preacher preach, I'm going to ask you if you're even saved. Because if you're saved, I know how my saving grace is in my life. I got to tell somebody. I got to be an example for him. Because when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. My life flashed in front of him. He says, I'm going to save that young man. And I'm going to fill him with the Holy Ghost at 13. And I'm going to watch over him all of his life. And I'm going to do something he don't want me to do. I'm going to call him to be a pastor. Because he ain't going to want to do that. But I'm going to call him anyway. Because I see his heart. Put yourself in the story now. What was he seeing about your life when he was on the cross? You got a real demand to do it for him now? Come on, somebody. Yeah. Can you plan and run events? Do you know how to handle publications? There are things and helps that need to be done in church. And every one of you have giftedness. And contrary to popular belief, the ground is still level at the foot of the cross. This is where I preach most of the time, is in the altar. Because everywhere in Scripture, from the Old Testament to the New, that he says upon this rock he didn't just say it to Peter when they asked what his name was and what they're calling him from the Old Testament to the New it referenced the altar upon this rock is where he builds 
he's come to build in your life today he's come to firm up your foundation today he's the anointer the blesser the convictor and the lover of our soul his name is Jesus his breath breathes life from the time of the beginning to the valley of dry bones to today on the 21st day of August of 2022 he's still breathing upon this rock there's so many places to serve in the kingdom the only question remains is are you ready to serve will you serve stand with me if you would I'm familiar with the time and I'm not going to be lengthy but I am going to take the moment If you would bow your hearts with me and close your eyes and no one looking around, please, let me just ask you an old school question. Preachers don't like to ask it in churches anymore because, well, that's just not seeker sensitive. I serve the one that comes to seek and save that which is lost. That's the seeker sensitivity that I have in my life today. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior in the full part of your sin this morning? Because if you don't, I want to introduce you to my best friend, the head of my house, the lover of my soul, the one that makes me a better husband, a better provider, and a better love to my wife, the one that makes me a better dad and a better papa, one that makes me a better pastor. It helps me to love people despite what it is we're all going through. His name is Jesus. If you don't know him, with every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, please, no movement if you would. The most important part is right now to build this rock, build upon the rock of our salvation. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, slip your hand up and write back down. Or if you've known him and you need to renew your commitment this morning through redemption, because he will redeem you right where you are. Slip your hand up and write back down. Okay. I'm not going to last long here. Here's the one I feel like God is really speaking this morning. Because apparently I'm speaking to save people. So if you would say, Pastor David, now is the time. And upon this rock, I'm ready to serve not the rock of Leander Church of God not the rock of Pastor Mark or First Lady Rosa but upon the rock of our salvation I'm ready to serve I'm ready to serve Jesus with everything that is within me I want you to lift your hand up all over the building come on lift them high 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 yes 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 And as you're lifting your hand, I want you to just begin to pray with me right now, right where you are. And allow the Holy Ghost of God to begin to just do a work in you that only He can do. Saints of God, help me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above every name. Lord, right now in this setting, it's easy. Because we've bound together in cords of love that cannot be broken. But God, there's going to come a point when we're going to walk out these doors. We're going to get into our automobiles or whatever form of transportation that brought us into this house today. And we're going to leave this gathering and this group of people where our faith is built and where we are united together. And it's when we're on our own and by ourselves, God, help us to remember we lifted our hand today. Help us to remember we made a commitment today. Help us to remember that upon this rock, We will serve this church. We will serve you. And we will serve with excellence. 
We will serve without reservation. And we will do that which you have called us to do. Now, Father, I pray for the giftedness in this room. There are some, they fit the bill of some of the areas that I called out. But you know, oh God, that the works of helps in church is limitless. There's so many areas that we can fill and do. So, Lord, I'm asking you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost and in Jesus' name, multiply with the anointing of the Holy Ghost the talents and the gifts and the callings that are upon your people this morning, the hands that are raised, the hearts that are lifted, and the minds that are determined with the heart that is stirred to do that which you have called them to do. Because, Lord, we might only have 50 more days. You might give us 50 weeks. And we know that you're coming soon. But it matters not how much time that we have left. It matters what we do with the time. So, Lord, help us. Help us. Help us. Anoint us. Anoint us, O oh God, to do that which you have called us to do. And let us not refrain from stepping out. Let us not refrain from reaching out. Lord, that you might cause us to know that not only our steps are ordered according to the Scripture, but that we can look and see you are the lamp for our feet and the light unto our path. For this, O oh God, we call it done. In the name of the Father and of the Son, now the Holy Ghost, we declare it. Somebody said amen. Come on and give God a great big hand clap of praise. <laughs> Pastor Mark, thank you so much for the opportunity this morning. I know this was not my normal traditional altar call style setting. But because of what the Lord laid upon my heart, I felt like the whole church was an altar this morning. And it wasn't the touch of Pastor David that you needed today. There's an old song we used to sing years ago that talks about the brush of angels' wings. You just need needed the Lord to pass by and just lay his hand on your shoulder. I believe God has done just that today. Do you believe that today? Come on, give him big praise. Praise the Lord. Can you let Pastor David let him know that you appreciate the word this morning? Such an awesome word. Y'all may be seated for just one more moment. I, I know y'all have been through a lot today, and I know everybody's hungry. We have done our best this weekend and through this week to honor all our past. We have honored Pastor David Taylor. We have honored... Pastor Carol Shona and Mama Shona. And this morning, and I'm not sure where Pastor Kendrick is. He'll be, back. He'll be back in a minute, so we'll give him a minute. But we want to honor them this morning. You know, I learned, Pastor David, that in order to understand where we're going, that we got to know where we've been and where we are. I understood that. That was something the Lord showed me. If you ever want to understand in your life where you're going, you got to understand where you've been, what God has taken you out of, and where you are. And allow Christ to propel you forward. Amen. I want to ask Pastor Kendrick and Sister Kendrick to come forward. 
if y'all would, please. I love this couple so dearly. They are like my second parents. I grew up with Mark Kendrick here. Me and him got in lots of trouble together. Amen. Flew from Weatherford to here in an hour and a half one day. Amen. That was an awesome ride. <laughs> and a little, whatever. I don't even remember what you were driving at that time. Amen. But I want to present to you this plaque and honor y'all and appreciate y'all for y'all's faithful service to this church. Thank y'all so much for the legacy that y'all have provided to the Leander Church of God. Thank you so much. Yes, give them a hand. Amen. If I could have Pastor David and Mama Shelnut, go ahead and come up. Where's my camera, people? Come on, cameras. I need some pictures. I need some pictures. Oh, come on. I know I got more. Where are y'all? Man, I, I, I can always find you when I don't want to find you. We have Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, Mama. Can you get a picture of these three, please? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh, Lydia's got to get one. Amen. Can you give him one more hand? Thank them for their service here. Thank you. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all so much. We pray that the Lord has blessed you today. Don't forget Wednesday night at 7.15. Please be praying for my wife as she will be going through surgery tomorrow morning. We got to be at the hospital at 6.15. And be praying for her. Be praying for us. And uh, I'm, I'm taking the next week off to be the caregiver to my wife. Amen. And. We're just looking forward to what God is going to do. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Y'all be blessed and have a wonderful afternoon. God bless you.